Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a hemostat shirt. I'm going to start by folding the shirt in half diagonally from one shoulder seam to the opposite corner of the hem. Ultimately, I want to put some large diagonal fan folds in the shirt. So from here, I'm going to take the corner that's sticking up, the corner of the hem that's sticking up, and fold it down to that midline. Then fold it in half again. I'm going to press on the top seam, and that's going to make a line on the shirt where I can then unfold the shirt and use that line as a guide to make my fan folds. I think this is an easier way to end up making the fan folds equal in size. Now I'm going to grab and pinch that midline because this is kind of an unusual fold. I don't want it to come undone. And very gently turn the shirt over. I'm going to do the same technique on the other side of the shirt. But it's a little easier this time because I already know the width that I need my fan folds to be. So I'm going to fan fold this side of the shirt to fit the width of the other side. From here, I'm using a straight edge and a washable marker to make marks in the middle of this fold. I like to draw a line straight down the middle. So these are guidelines for me to draw that line. I'm also going to draw some lines going the other direction on the shirt. So I'm going to use my straight edge and measure the length of the shirt and then try to make marks that are in equal distance from each other. I chose 5 inches for this shirt. Now I'm going to use my straight edge hemostats and the hemostats that I'm using are either 10 inch or 12 inch hemostats. Then I'm going to place the hemostats in a V on the shirt. So to do that I'm going to attach one hemostat to the side of the shirt and put the end of the hemostat into that corner that I made with the lines. I'll do the same thing on the other side. I've coated my hemostats in heat shrink tubing to try to keep them from damaging the fabric. I purchased the heat shrink tubing at either Lowe's or Home Depot in the electrical department. Then I used a heat gun to shrink it down to fit the ends of the hemostats.
Now I'm going to carefully take one of my racks and slide the shirt over on top of the rack so that it can dry out just a little bit. Because of the way that I folded the shirt, it's not a super thick fold, but I do want to let it dry out just a little bit. As you can see, it pretty much goes from end to end on this rack. So that I can see the design a little better, I decided to only use two colors for this shirt. And because it is so long, I decided to spread it out over two racks. But I didn't want to dye this inside because I was a little bit concerned that where the two containers and racks meet, it would leak. So I've taken it outside underneath the trees. I'm going to start by applying Orchid from Dharma Trading Company to every other section. And like I said, this isn't a super thick fold, so I'm trying not to over apply the dye. Also, please ignore all the sticks and branches that you see. We've had quite a few storms recently and a lot of crazy wind, and so it's knocked loose pretty much anything that was dead up in the tree. It's also spring here, and so right now I'm under the maple tree. So you see all the little helicopter things that drop from the maple tree. I figured this would be better than being underneath the oak trees that I have that have all of the little snaky pollen bits. In the remaining sections, I'm adding periwinkle from Dharma. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of dry soda ash over the top of the dye. Then I'm going to layer ice on top. Since I don't have any kind of an ice barrier, I'm putting just a fairly thin layer of ice over the top. After this layer of ice melted, I came back and added two more thin layers of ice to the top of the shirt. So this is what it looked like after I added each new layer of ice. And because this is such an unusual shape and so long, I went ahead and just left it outside overnight. I took one of the lids from my containers and carefully laid it on top and piled a couple branches on top of it so that it wouldn't blow away. Thankfully, it didn't rain that night and it was okay to leave outside. Okay, so this is what it looked like right before I began rinsing it. I ended up with a little bit of dirt in my sink when I transferred the shirt over from the container. So that's what you see down in the bottom. Some pollen and some dirt. The shirt stayed outside for about 24 hours after the last layer of ice melted. And it was a nice warm day, so it's had plenty of time to process. So I started rinsing the shirt in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I warmed the water to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I also took the hemostats off and continued rinsing a little while longer in the hot water. When the water was running almost clear, I put the shirt along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent into my washing machine and washed it using a hot water cycle. And after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? So I like the way this one turned out. I wasn't entirely sure exactly how it would look because this was just an experiment. I thought I would try something new. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. You can see the lines going diagonally across the shirt where I folded the shirt. And then obviously you can see the design from the hemostats. And I like that zigzag design that the hemostats made. I think that's very unique. I like that. I think it looks cool. I also purposely only used two colors on the shirt because I wanted to see exactly where the dye went and get a little bit better feel for the design. Sometimes if I try a new design and I use too many colors on the shirt, it's a little bit difficult to see exactly what the design is. And I wanted this one to be more readable and easy to detect. So that's the reason why I only use the two different colors. So the part of the shirt, which if you're looking at the front of the shirt, 
is the right hand upper portion of the shirt. That was what was on the outside when I was applying the dye. And as you can tell, those colors are more bright and vivid. The further down inside the shirt, you can tell that the design kind of fades away a little bit or it kind of blends into each other. It's not quite as distinct, but you can still see the zigzag design on the shirt. It's just a little bit more distinct up in that corner. I'm going to try this one again, but I'm going to use some liquid dye next time and see how this one turns out. I'm not entirely sure that this is the proper design to use ice dye with, but I like this. I like the design on the shirt and I think it's very unique. As far as the colors go, um, of course I always love orchid and periwinkle, so I think they go really well together on this shirt. But like I said, I think I would like to try using liquid and see if I can get all the areas to be a little bit more uniform in color. But overall, I'm pretty happy with just the actual design that the shirt ended up being. If you've enjoyed watching this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.